Hello, hello, it's your friend Double Bite, and we're back with One Step from Eden. So, um, briefly, yeah, I haven't been around in a while, because I haven't really played video games since I was updating this channel. I don't know, just stop playing games. This is the first video game I have played in for more than like an hour in months. Um, so, without depression stuff that's interesting to talk about, without video games to play, no real reason to uh, upload videos. But, um, um, way back when this was on Kickstarter, I played a bunch of this, uh, the demo, and loved it, and since it's, um, come out, I think, like, a month ago or so now, I've been playing it um, pretty much daily, and it's lived up to all of my wild expectations. So, before I get into it, real briefly, update on my life. Doing good, surviving this quarantine. Um, I live with my spouse, Burb. Um... And I have a lovely partner who I haven't thought of a clever name for. But, and they are very lovely as well. We all hang out a lot. It's great fun. But yeah, so let's play some One Step from Eden. So part of my reason to record this is just because I do miss recording videos. And it's nice to have a game I'm excited about to play and chat about. And the other reason is um, one of my friends on Twitter was commenting on the difficulty... And uh, my friend Runner started playing, and um, so I figured I would record this video not as like um, a Let's Play Part Tips video. I'm just going to kind of go through some basic suggestions and hints. I'll just look at my stats real quick, so out of curiosity. So yes, I've been playing this for about 44 hours. Um, 18 victories, about 80 deaths. It's kind of funny because it actually took me 10 hours before my first victory. It was about like the twelfth game, I think, uh, which was with Saffron. Um, and so each character has uh, two modes, like two different styles. So Saffron's first two modes took me a long time. Reaper took me a while, but I would say overall, I've gotten to the point where I can win like one in three games. Still can't be the shopkeeper, and the reason is I know what I'm good at. You know, and I know what I'm not good at. I'm pretty good at dodging, but I'm not great at aiming, and I can't dodge and aim at the same time. I'm old. I've never been great at Twitch reflex, like reflex-based games, despite playing a lot of bullet hells. So I figured out a strategy that works for me almost every time. So we're just going to start a regular old Saffron. I do have all the unlocks, but I don't think there's anything particularly break game-breaking in them. I'm just going to do Saffron's default kit um um a gun that shoots gun that shoots on death heal um and some of your our basic spells so i'm going to kind of go through this in a little bit of a slapdash way and i'll be playing on this is just kind of like extra difficulties i've just been playing on like two goods I'm stuck at dodger, so this sucks by like making it a little trickier for myself. Yeah. So I'll do the first round more or less commentary free. I mean I'm gonna keep babbling because I babble non-stop on the recording. But um I'm not gonna like tell you how to play the game. Don't get hit by things, kill cast spells. But I will kind of go through some of my thought process and planning. Because at the end of the game, this game is very strategic. So, here's the spoiler edition of my strategy. The number, these are your focuses. You can choose up to two focuses out of the kind of spell schools. Part one of Double Bite's cheese this game strategy, pick Phalanx. So, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, we have um, this luck value. This luck value increases every time you beat the level. Um, it increases the difficulty of the enemies, but also the quality of the loot. Additionally, having these set to none increases it by one. So, you know, if we turn this back off, it's now at three. So Phalanx has shield and protection. We turn that to shield and protection. This other one, I like to leave it blank at first, but to speed, to speed up the strategy, you pick Anima, for Frost and Flames and Thunder, or Misery, 
poison. So this strategy is basically get lots of defense and get lots of damage over time effects. Um, so, step one, set your focuses, pick one as phalanx, the other leave blank, or pick one of the two primarily uh, damage over time fields. Um, I'm not going to go too much into these right now. Um, this does get you defense, and as you can see, the name Phalanx is in yellow, meaning that's one of your focuses. However, I don't really like Shield Catch. Uh, we only have three maximum mana. This buff costs four maximum mana. Um, but both of these are quite good. I really like Rock Tomb, so I'm going to take it, even though I can't cast it. Spells that you cannot cast um, can be quote-unquote cast for, and just gets them out of your way. So if you uh, if their cost is greater than your max mana, you can essentially freely get rid of them. Now flow just means you know you have flow and you cast a spell, you lose a flow. And if you had a flow and you cast a spell that triggers off a flow as a benefit. So kinetic wave gives you flow, rock tomb gives you flow, and gives you sh shield piercing, for the attack if you had flow when you cast it. Um, flow is kind of hard to make a whole strategy out of, but it's nice to pick up some things that give you flow or proc off of flow in case of accidental benefit. Basically, I don't take, I don't go for flow strategies, but Rock Tomb is good as it is. Rock Tomb is amazing if you have flow. So sometimes we'll get the benefit, sometimes we won't. So. Now, as far as this goes... Um, just briefly, you have Battles, Distress, which is where you can rescue people. Hazards are tougher battles that get you upgraded spells. Mini-bosses are tougher battles that get you more money and artifacts. Treasures, uh, which is like the chest, give you a chest, but they're often hard to break open, so it's not actually that reliable. Camp heals you. Um, and shop lets you buy things. So, another bit of strategy is kind of know if you have things that can hit at a distance. A lot of times when you're trying to rescue the hostages in this game, they will be standing right in front of the thing about to kill them because they are hostages. Saffron starts with Thunder, which hits uh, tiles away, and Step Slash, which hits can hit things behind other things. So Saffron is better at the start of the game at rescuing hostages than other people. That's one consideration. This path lets us rescue two hostages, which are essentially three things. We don't have that much or damages in that area if we just started, so we might not be able to break this. And we don't really have that much money. So getting this shop is kind of useless, but I don't intend to take damage. So getting into this camp is definitely useless. So I'm just going to try to go down this path that gets us the most hostages and gets us this upgraded spell. Don't worry about paying attention to all that. I'm not trying to do this as a necessarily a tutorial, and this is more of a playing with tips, and I recommend only listening to about like a fourth of what I say. So little beauty is a self-defense turret. If you hit it, it hits you. Which means that that was incredibly easy, because um, you know what let us win. Oh, that's interesting. So we can get a lot of shield that way, but it's very vulnerable to AOE and can block us. However, this shields up has the bonus apply fragile and hit, which actually makes us fragile when we use it. Fragile means you take 1.5 more damage, so I don't really want that on my shield. And I hate the spell. So I'm honestly tempted to just skip all of these. Because shield gen costing all of my mana is a little rough. But, um... Yeah, I'm just going to skip all of these. I don't like them. But it's okay to do. So we have first set of rewards. 
In this case, it's quite obvious we want one max mana because we have a spell that costs four. However, to keep in mind, blue blood is surprisingly good, particularly if you have spells that get you mana, but start out with poor mana regen. Explosive tendons I personally don't like, because enemies will sometimes explode and kill your hostages, and I'd like to save hostages in this game because I am a nice boy. Let's continue. But right now I'm just going to kind of face tank to save these very nice people. Technically speaking, I got nothing out of that. Those were both heal ho hostages that heal you. So if I just let them both die, I wouldn't have taken any damage. But, I don't know. I like to try to save the people in this game. I play this game as nice as possible. So the question is, do we want to try to break open a chest or possibly rescue a hostage? And I'm going to go with trying to rescue a hostage. Now, if people would like me to do more of an intense um, talk about the enemies, talk about the game a little bit more, I'm trying to put a little bit of that in here, but... Again, this is really more intended to people who have played the game a little bit, because if you want just the basics, you're better off doing a tutorial or looking at someone else. Anyway, but I will talk about spell choices. So Reflect for 0 0.6 seconds, really good. If you have good timing, I do not. Revenge, I actually think is a really good skill against bosses, because it's a, essentially 100 damage that almost doesn't miss. And fire is good, like fire just deals 140 damage over seconds. But I'm not in love with any of these, and I generally try to keep my deck tight. Um, because, um, for a number of different reasons. Now then, choice. Frost damage is dealt with the target. It's really good, but we don't really have frost energies. This choice is always one mana rent regen, or situational two mana regen. And Citrine is honestly so, so good that I'm actually tempted to pick up Citrine even though we don't have any sources of fire and just try to get fire sources later. Because this is global, so if two enemies are both being damaged by fire at once, congratulations, you just got 0.4 mana. So actually, I'm going to open up my deck thing, change this from none to anima to try to increase the chance of us getting fire spells. Go on from there. I think this is the one game where, like, I haven't played Saffron in so long. And Saffron's the only person who can actually deal with the hostages that are right in front of the target, and I get none of them. Like I said, Shield Catches Shield, I don't really like it. Drug Toss is fine, but I actually really, really like Tile Fire. Its damage per mana ratio is really good, it gets us flow. And we have a little bit of a flow sub-theme going. Um, and it can be really nice to be able to hit targets that are not in your column. Or in your row, rather. So I quite I quite like Tile Fire. It does destroy the ground, which is a bit annoying, but so it goes. So, rule number one, don't hit the shopkeeper. She will destroy you. I still cannot beat her. I really would like to beat her, but so I can unlock her, but... Can't. So. Um... One thing I've learned in this game is that these sound scary, like they sound like really bad um, detriments. But if you can take them while you can, it's a really nice thing. So I will happily trade 140 health for an upgrade when I have this much health. I'm also tempted to do this as well because missiles are dodgeable. Um, pause on that for a second. We don't really have any spell. Oh, actually, rock to moves. So upgrading a spell um, is also very good. I'll go into upgrade strategies later. Right now, I don't want to get more upgrades, I don't think. Later in the game, I'd like to remove Thunder and Step Slash because they're both a little bit tricky to hit. But right now, they're pretty nice for hitting backline enemies. Let's just go over these options. I'm not willing to pay 90 for that. Tempting, but meh. Frost Barrage is quite good. 
And we are also going into Anima, so we may pick up other sources of ice. Plus, picking Frost Barrage here means we won't get offered it randomly. So I am going to snag Frost Barrage. And we're going to refresh the stock, see if we get anything better. Ooh, do I want to sell more health for another upgrade? I'm a spicy boy, hell yeah. Now we could get some of these if we donated a lot of blood, but we're already to be pretty low in life, so I'm not going to do that. So I would really like some extra mana, but we'll hold off on that. However, I am going to snag Fracture, because we are getting quite a nice flow sub-package here. Now, one option we could do right now is try to go more heavily into flow. So, Hearth is flow, root, and tile destruction. Um, and there's a lot of the things that proc off of flow, but tile destruction is pretty annoying because it removes the number of spaces you can walk around in. Um, Hearth does have some shields as well. But here's the thing. Here are, my fa here are some of my favorite Hearth spells. Well, Rock Tomb is one of my favorites. Tile Fire is one of my favorites. And Fracture is one of my favorites. So for me personally, we already have like three of the four, three of the five Hearth spells I like the most. So it really wouldn't make sense for me to switch my pro um, switch either of these now. What this does mean is that I'm less likely to buy spells in the future. Because Flow spell Flow is spent on every spell cast, and I'd like to be able to keep Chain Flow if possible. So, because I have this kind of unintentional synergy, I'm going to try to avoid getting spells going forward. So this is the, an ice-themed boss that doesn't cast Frost, which I always find slightly funny. Um, and if you saw, um, before I cast Rock Tomb, it had like a little glowiness about it. Yeah, it's Sice her name is like either Cecily or Cicely, depending on how punny you want to get. Oof, should not have gotten hit there. Oh, I keep on forgetting that I have a gun that doesn't cost mana, that I can just hold down E and get free damage in. Because um, a lot of the side characters have basic weapons that actually cost mana. Um, but yeah, so like when you unlock Cicely as a character, um, your stuff is all ice related. But the actual fight doesn't have any ice related things as a boss. It strikes me as very weird. I feel like Cicely is one of um, the bosses in this game that's a real skill test boss. Which I'm failing pretty miserably because turns out I'm out of practice at playing games and talking at the same time. I should be doing this boss without getting hit. But very much a skill test boss as far as very predictable patterns that hit very hard. Now then. Um... In each boss, you have a choice of sparing them or killing them. If you kill them, you get two artifacts, one of which is, I think, guaranteed to be either a, um, an upgrade or a removal, and you get a spell. If you spare them, you heal 400 life, and they will give you a, a random perk in future levels. If you To get the pacifist ending, you have to spare all the bosses. And I almost always do pacifist endings, partially because I like to heal, partially because, I don't know, they're cool peeps. In order to unlock each character's secondary style, you do need to do a non-pacifist clear with that character. So to unlock Saffron's alternate mode, I would need to do at least one kill. But this is going to be a pacifist run. Now then, first major choice we made, well, first major recommendation I made was to start out with um, Phalanx for armor gain and then some damage over time secondary school. Here is the second biggest piece of strategy I can give you. The order which you do zones matters immensely. So there's four kinds of zones. Ice, which we just saw, forest, ruins, and fire. And um, each of them has two associated bosses. So there's, as you go through these zones, they get harder. So there's a couple things you want to consider. Three things you want to consider. One. Which of the zones gets the hardest? Two, which of the bosses are the hardest? 
And three, what perks do the bosses get you? So, for me, which of the zones is the hardest? I hate forest. Two fo forest gets so bullet helly towards the later on in the game, I find it very difficult. Second, which bosses are the hardest? I find the two ice bosses, Cecily and Violetta, to be very, very difficult. They scale very intensely. Third question, what perks do they give? Um, um, Celice? Celice? Whatever. Um, Celice's buff is pretty good. The best buff in the game, I, in my opinion, comes from one of the forest people. So, I hate playing forest and ice later. And they give me a pretty good buff, so I almost always do ice and forest first. I find the two fire bosses to be by far the easiest, so I'll, almost always, I'll always do fire last. And then the ruins bosses are kind of in the middle. One of the two ruins bosses is pretty easy, the other one's quite difficult. But given these choices, I am definitely going to do a forest. Note that there are two forest bosses and two forest zones, but we don't see which bosses. But I'm going to go with forest. So the TLDR on that is, pick your zone order carefully. I would say always, always, always do fire last. Always, always, always do forest and ice first. With the actual kind of details of that depending on what your build is. And um, what your personal preferences are. So I'm actually going to take shield catch right here, even though I hate it. Because you keep getting offered it. And I can always remove it later. And it's like, not a bad thing. But I really want to start getting some better offers. So, let's see here. Planning our route out. At this point, um... So, our boss is going to be Hazel. Which is a little unfortunate. I like to fight the other forest boss earlier because he has a very good passive perk that you get. But I think right now I want to prioritize the powered up spell that you get from a, um, a hazard level and the artifact we get from a mini boss, and I'll figure out what else I need as we go. God, uh, I'm not used to talking this much. I'm in fucking quarantine. Okay, so we got some. So t you can also find chests in these levels, as you saw, and they're, I think, always timed. So you gotta try to prioritize them if you want to be able to get that or not. There's another one of those self-defense turrets back there, so we don't want to be shooting willy-nilly, because that thing uh, will hurt us immensely. Which is why I'm, one of the reasons I'm not firing uh, my main attack right now. Yeah, so there's a number of different modifiers, so like Frost, when you get three Frost decks, it deals 150 damage. That can also be really damn good. Alright, so let's check out our options here. Now, as we see, we are focusing on Phalanx and Anima, but we got neither. That happens. Because this is a hazard level, these all have modifiers. Apply Fragile, nice. Double summon to HP, eh. And minus one mana cost. Now, Twoxin is fucking dope. I haven't. I happen to really like it. Minus one mana cost doesn't matter that much, but I'll happily take that as a spell. If you think about it, it's one mana deal 100 damage, and then 50 damage, and then 25 damage. That's pretty sweet. So yeah. So if you saw there, um, randomly Cecily will just give you um, a bunch of bonus damage, like just hit the enemies for free at the start of a level. But you know, free damage is free damage. Not bad. Um, I know we're looking for fire synergies. BK fire is so inconsequential that I'm not going to bother with it. Here's an interesting one. So, man, more mana is always good. And I do want to pick up some more extra mana. But we do have a weapon that shoots really fast. But it's not that much damage. Now, while we have flow, gain four spell power. 
Spell power is really interesting. Spell power is a damage per hit. What that means is it would make Slip Slash deal 84. Okay. But it would make each hit of Rock Tomb deal 4 more. That's a plus 16. So spell damage is amazing if you have spells that hit a lot of times. We don't really have that. Like a lot of times, like 10 times. We don't really have that yet. And I actually want to get us up a mana. Um, which I'll explain in a little bit. So let's just do that for now. So some enemies, typically bosses, will have a little countdown, which means that they won't start hurting you until the countdown's up. But then they'll usually just completely destroy you. So it gave that little cackle, and now it's like spamming laser beams everywhere. But I hit it with poison, so now we're cool. Dear God, this game is hard to play while talking. <laughs> I don't think I'm embarrassing myself too bad, though. So Adrenaline's pretty nice, but I'm just going to take the money because... Um, we are coming up on a shop. So, even though we don't have any spells that cost 5, why did I want to get to 5 bonus mana? The answer is a couple things. One... There's some things like this that where you can spend max mana to get a benefit. And that's actually really damn good. Um, another consideration is when we upgrade things, one of the upgrade options is cost more mana, but cast a spell twice. Let's try to upgrade Rock Tomb here. And Booyah, double, cost, double cast and mana cost. All three of these are actually really good though. So, Shots plus 4 and Jam is essentially the same thing as Double Cast, but instead of costing more mana, it adds kind of a, a Junk spell to our deck. And 10 Poison on Hit means that this adds 40 Poison, which means it adds about 60 damage. So that's all quite good. I'm actually going to go with the Shots plus 4 and Jam, but that's why I wanted the plus mana. Now, if we want to upgrade Rock Tomb again, it would cost us two upgrade points. Let's looky here. So we have plenty of max mana right now, and mana regen is really nice. Ideally, we'll be getting most of our mana regen from fire damage, but we don't really have that yet. So I'm tempted to get blue flame or mana gem. Getting both would be a little counterproductive. I don't want mana gem. If I'm like, okay, let's go for some big powerhouse spells. Blue Flame if I want to be going for some like more general spamming spells. In this case, I think I'm going to get an upgrade spell, and let's try to upgrade Rock Tomb again. So now let's see here. Splash damage, meh. Shots plus 4 jam, and then shots plus 2. That's pretty cool. Shots plus 4 jam, 25% chance to leave a flame on hit. That's pretty, that's pretty spicy, so that means we have a very high chance of leaving a flame here. And we do want flame synergy. Um, well, that's tempting. Shots plus two just gushes each of our casts of this. Makes them so efficient. I'm going to do that. And... Um, so torn between these two. I'm actually going to get a mana gem because I, as a kind of a metagame knowledge, know that there's a lot of very high cost, very powerful animal spells, and we'll be hoping to pick some of those up later. I'm also going to take a bunch of damage to gain max HP. When you're on a pacifist route, you kind of can assume that you're going to be getting healing at some point. And then let's refresh. Hmm. Take one damage every time you move. So that sounds awful. But if you have a bunch of shield, it's pretty much a freebie. Unfortunately, Phalanx has not been turning up very well for us, so I'm not gonna I don't think we can afford to take that damage. But I will sell time. So increase the trouble time, give us max at max HP. Cool. And because I'm a spicy boy, donating blood, I can get more money, which will get us another refresh. Now, even though a refresh doesn't, doesn't won't let us buy anything because we'll be out of money, we might get some more pacts. And I honestly think pacts 
can be a really big upswing in luck. And here we go. Halved mana regen, but plus 5 luck, which will increase our loot quality for the rest of the game. And create flames to heal health, and we already kind of want flames. So, boom, and boom. Now, it would be nice if we could buy Firewall. So that costs 35. This goes down by 2 each time. So we would need to spend 300 life to get Firewall. I'm actually going to do that, because Firewall is really good. Um, And I'm going to get rid of Step Slash. So Firewall, since it creates a column 4 tiles away, it's also a ranged option. Um, uh, getting behind the enemy lines option. And I really am bad at Step Slash, so I'm just going to remove that. And now we are injured, but have higher max life. We've upgraded a bunch of things. That was quite a time. And oh no, my max help. And booyah. Threw down some fire there. Unfortunately, neither of those um, hostages were healing us. One, the green suit, one gives us an artifact, as we can see here, and the other one just gives us money. But still, it's still good. Wow, we are getting no phalanx and no of, none of the good anima. That is unfortunate. So right now, we're, the, fo the focus like focus does help, but as you can see, it's not a guarantee. However, we'll hopefully see here that um, the f uh, firewall happens to be very good against this boss a lot of the time, and that the pack that spawns fire everywhere, well, it does spawn fire on us. It can spawn fire over there. And importantly, this particular boss spawns um, so spawns turrets on our side of the map. So basically this downside will take care of that for us. Which is pretty sweet. So as so we had that spell and now we have this jam that we need to spend two mana to get rid of. See, like, those those flame turrets would be a huge pain in the butt for us to deal with. But, by providence, we managed to uh, get something that actually kills them for us. I think I appreciate that if you do a lethal damage and you still have ongoing effects fly through the air, it won't accidentally kill the boss for you. And we're doing a pacifist run, so we're going to spare the boss. As I mentioned, I almost always try to do forest and ice first, and this is no exception. So, now we're going to be fighting against Shizo. So she's also a pretty easy boss, but importantly, at uh, the campfires that we were seeing that heal you, he will also give you free items. So if you have a strategy where you don't really want that many more um, spells, but you want to get a lot of artifacts, it's a great way to do so. Wow, Phalanx, I just really do not like Reflector. And we have a hearth option that gets us shield and flow. It cracks adjacent tiles, which means that if you step on them again, they break. Which I'm not huge on. But I would really like some more arm armor at this point. And we do have quite a few flow synergies going, so... Alright, so here's the interesting question. So we have a couple options here. So this route will get us an item from the chest and an upgraded spell. This can get us two upgraded spells and rescue a person. Or this can get us two rescue people. This could be of heal you, which we need. They can get you artifacts, which are nice, or money, which we want. Um, however, getting an upgraded spell would be really nice. But I actually think in this case, because we have a shop coming up, I'm going to try to prioritize getting money. Okay, and... Nice, I actually didn't know how that was going to play out, but I'm glad we didn't kill him. And there we go, one of our nice, high-value uh, anima spells, Thunderstorm. 
Not ice or fire, but still very, very good, especially when upgraded. And this is a toughie. We have so much flow, so we're probably always going to have four spell power, but we don't really have any good multipliers for that spell power. And our deck is pretty expensive, so being able... Eh, it's not that bad. I think right now this is more useful, but that we're going to have flow so reliably that I think the uh, if we can get a spell power synergy um, thing, that would be really nice. And more damage is never bad. Oh wow, we got a, so we got a freebie here. So yeah, so Hazel, the boss we previously saw, will randomly summon turrets for you. I feel like a lot of the time they just kind of get in the way, but in these situations it's very handy. Yes. And minigun is why we want uh, spell damage. 5 damage 12 times? How about 9 damage 12 times? This artifact alone almost doubled that spell's damage. I really hate those cactuses. I'm like a very annoying enemy. So this is actually not my favorite fire spell, but it's really cool sounding, and it's still good. So uh, I'll take it. All right, what do we got here, shopkeep? Lose two max mana for one battle to heal a lot. Sounds good. A cell skin is lose a lot of defense in an upgrade. Which is terrifying. Like I don't I just don't think we can afford to do that, so I'm not going to. Um though I am tempted. Now I'm gonna get a bunch of upgrade spell. And refresh to see what else we can see. Lose five money when you shuffle. That is like my favorite thing. Wanna know why? Because I don't have any money. Problem solved. And sell sword. Swords are dodgeable. So it's basically free heal. Cool. Now we have three upgrade, which means we could upgrade our rock tomb. But it's already doing a pretty good job. And you do get some diminishing returns. So let's see what else we can do. I almost always favor upgrading AoE spells above anything else. So my my choices, my looks would be here: Wildfire, Thunderstorm, and Minigun. Minigun's not really AoE, but as we saw, if anything procs like on hit, Minigun's hitting 12 times. So I'm going to start with the Thunderstorm upgrade. Minus one mana cost, nice. But shots plus two triggers per wave. So that's really good. And because we've already gotten the shots per wave, that means that any future on hit things are going to be better. Double cast is going to be better. So I'm going to try to upgrade it again. So consume heal and gain 5 max HP is honestly a really good buff, but we don't want it on our Thunderstorm. Gain 10 shield is fine, but apply fragile on hit is just going to weaken the entire enemy field. It's honestly not my favorite, but it's pretty damn good. Okay. Yeah, now um, our battles become cast thunderstorm and just dodge things until it takes care of everything for us. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So Spell Shield I actually really like as a basic spell. But this one has the modifier Consume, Heal, and Gain 5 max HP, which I also like as a thing. However, if I take Spell Shield now, I'm not going to be offered it in the future. And my max HP is already so ridiculous, I don't really care about buffing it that much. So I'm going to take Leech and just try to use it to consistently heal back a little bit. Um, each battle. Yep. 
Jesus, I actually really like the... This is one of my favorite boss fights, I think. Um, I think he does a couple of different things that are pretty interesting. Um, skills are easy to dodge, but I feel like they're a good amount of punishing if you don't dodge them. Like, that one that he just did, um, force shuffles your deck if you don't dodge it. He has a couple spells that, like, or abilities that, like, look like they're going to do one thing, but do something different. So, I feel like it, it's a good mix of, if I lose to him, it feels like it's my fault. Which is important to me. You know, because I'm a sore loser. And he also jams up your deck. Which is actually kind of neat, because there um, are synergies in this game that give you benefits if you cast a lot of jam or jam in your deck. But wow, he went down. So here's the interesting question. So we've got ice or two earth. Um, one of the two earth bosses, all the earth bosses are pretty tough. One of them is a huge pain in the butt. So, um, so it's kind of tempting to get one of those out of the way. But I'm going to go with ice because if I lost to Violetta, I'd just be embarrassed at this point because she just gets so hard later and I don't want to deal with it. Also, ignore the fact that I just completely missed that. Wow, that was dope. Okay, there we go. Counter-Strike, one of the best Phalanx spells because it just gives you shield and does some damage for not that much mana, and that's all you want. One thing to keep in mind is that you lose 40% of your shield when you shuffle. So, it is important to have the your sources of shield be kind of... Um, Spammable. So, we fought Shizo, which means that if we go to the campfire, we can get armor. I mean, get an item. So this gets us two upgraded spells, one item, it gets us a shop. These are honestly all pretty tempting. I'm going to go with this route because we have a decent amount of money, and this just gets us a little bit of everything. But there are some artifacts that give you bonuses per person he saved. And in that case, if we had one of those, I'd probably go one of these routes. But we don't, so I don't know what I'm talking about that. Now it's kind of interesting, so I have two powerful AoE spells right now. However, I really don't want to cast Q, which is Wildfire, because it could hit the self-defense turret. Similarly, if there was, like, um, allies on the other side, I really wouldn't want to cast Lightning Bolt, because I could accidentally kill them. And that's just embarrassing. So in consideration that a lot of times there's some of the um, strategies I'm advocating for can backfire a little bit. Oh yeah, I don't know if this is the right call, but this spell is dope. So, fire the shot for each spell cast in this battle, which means it scales well with spell damage. And it double casts. So when we cast this, it is just going to vomit everywhere. Which sounds way grosser than it did in my head. But in this case, we want to vomit everywhere, I guess. So right now I'm just going to try my very best to kill this before time runs out. Um, and we managed it, thankfully. That one can be annoying. Hey, gain invincibility for one second and fragile when you take damage. So this is a very interesting artifact. I've never taken it, and I'm not going to now. I can't tell if it's good or not. I feel like... So A, I don't know if it blocks the initial damage or not. But, like, I feel like... I don't know. I just don't like it. It is really neat, though. I'm not a fan of any of these. Generally speaking, I don't like taking spells that require me to aim, because I'm bad at that. I can focus on aiming or dodging, so I will always focus on dodging. That's kind of the theme of the whole by defense and area of effect spell strategy. You know, acknowledging my weaknesses here. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Oh, he cast faster. There we go. And yes, I just leeched his health. Because I can. Fate Shield. I slept on this spell for a very long time. Because I'm like, oh, it's a net. It's a, a, you net you break even. Here's the thing. By the time they actually hit something, Fate Shield will have soaked damage for you. So, like, if this is your only source of shield, it's really good. If you take a lot of damage, 
It's basically heal 200. It is fantastic. And with that, we have, I think, th we have three reliable shield spells. Shields up, counter strike, and fate shield. We have one crappy one, so I'm actually going to turn off phalanx and go to double anima because I want to um, maybe get some more fire synergy or some more frost synergy since we have the frost barrage. I'm pretty happy with our defenses. I'm going to focus on offense now. Ooh, Diamond Ring is actually another uh, another spell I really like because it's free shield. I do like free shield. Um, do I want to take that though? I'm a little hesitant to take this. There's some things that it's really good with. I'm not quite sure if we want it this this run or not. I'm gonna focus on getting an upgrade and a refresh to see if we can get something good here. Um, lose money when we shuffle to gain max HP. Fine by me. Five damage to all enemies when you cast a spell is good, but I don't think it's great. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. we could refresh, or we could donate blood to get Trirag. So Trinity is if you cast three spells with Trinity, the the next one gets a huge buff. Ragnarok is just a big fuck you spell. And we do have a Trinity Synergy with Minigun, which double casts on Synergy. But I'm going to fish for some more packets, I think. And yeah, lose money when we shuffle to get an upgrade? I don't care. I don't have any money anyway. Um, side note, Heart of the Cards is great if you can get it early in the game. and can really dictate a whole strategy. Um, but not worth pushing for now. So we have two upgrades. Let's go with minigun. The things we we're really hoping for here were like anything damage on hit. Shots plus two is kind of cool because that becomes shots plus four if you have Trinity. Shield is always nice. Splash damage doesn't really matter that much because the damage itself is so low. And uh, it can be backfired for trying to save um, hostages. I'm gonna go with uh, plus shots, but kind of up in the air. For our other upgrade, there's a couple of pretty good choices here. Oh, I actually should have considered trying to upgrade Ambient Burst again. That's okay. Um, we have a couple of good choices here. Wildfire, it would be good. Frost Barrage would actually be pretty good. Um, or I could save it for Minigun or Ambient Burst later. And I actually think I'm going to do that. You don't have to spend it right now. Wow, that's a lot going on. And because we have both, I do not want to hit W, because if I hit W, then that self-defense turret is going to ruin us. One thing I haven't pointed out is those little pods that have like the 160. If you kill them, they, um, whatchamacallit, they unleash an enemy. So wildfire is dangerous because of that self-defense turret, but I don't think it's piercing, so we're going to go with it. And it did not hit us. But it did unleash one of those annoying enemies that I just mentioned. And I'm taking lots of damage because there's just too much on the screen for me to pay attention to. But uh, we won, so uh, problem solved. Ooh, these are all pretty interesting. This is going to heal us a lot, but like, we have 400 plus 400 max health and we're already a our base health, our current health is higher than what we started with, so I don't think we really need to heal. And raining down frost is pretty dope. And we only have a little bit of frost energy, and we're focusing anima, so we have potential for even more, so I like it. Violet is awesome. But this boss fight, more than I think this boss fight scales harder than any other boss, so that ability right there. You, can, you get shield if you stand, like, DDR style on these spots. But you lose it when you get hit. So right now, you, like, net more armor than you lose. But later on, I'm pretty sure she deals at equal damage. So if you miss a single one of these, you just get obliterated. It is so harsh. 
this is a very satisfying box. Like, um, my very first videos to this channel, because I was dumb, were, um, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Which is not a game you want to record with a shitty computer mic. But, I don't think I'm even that terribly good at, but it, I do very much appreciate it. I should go back to that at some point. I get so in the zone while I'm trying to step on those that sometimes I forget to, like, actually attack. These, these amps are nasty, because I don't do well with visual overstimulation in games. Um, that's one of my biggest, I think, reasons I haven't been able to kill the shopkeeper is that she just puts a lot of um, clutter on the screen, and I just can't process it all. You know, just my personal strength and weaknesses, and hey, we won. We took about 300 damage that fight, but we're so strong at this point, it almost doesn't matter. And we're going to heal back that anyway. So yeah, so unless I horribly fuck this up, we're probably going to win this one. Um, you know, our strategy of AoE plus defense is going pretty well on both accounts. Um... Yeah. We've gotten... Mo so we're against Terra this time, and Terra's the last of the really nasty boss fights. So we just gotta, you know, survive one bad boss fight and we should be okay. Um, and yeah. Oop, well, I'll take that. And let's see here. We have a lot of money, so we might as well go for the... Shop. Can't get shop and item, unfortunately. We gotta try to get an upgraded spell or try to rescue an additional person. Um, rescuing an additional person is kind of useless since we don't have a synergy and we're at full health. So there's like a lot of outcomes that don't really help us that much. So I'm gonna go with this. Um, I still keep on forgetting that I can hit. I can use E to just deal damage. As I don't want to hit W, because I might hit the self-defense turret with my own spell, and then feel very silly. And there we go. Not too bad. Oh. oh that's actually kind of spicy. So you do, so double cast means that it will give itself two Trinity. It will shoot a bit of bajillion shots. We have the max mana for it. Yeah, let's try that. That's kind of fun. I like Trinity. Trinity is nice because it carries over across spell cast and shuffles. So no matter what, as long as you, even if you have one spell that gives you Trinity, eventually it will proc itself. So you know, I'll take it. Yeah, these little shits basically take one damage from anything. So they're just very tedious for basically anyone besides Saffron that doesn't have, you know, just a gun to shoot them with. Oh, the, these are always kind of cute. Summoning your own self defense turret. I don't tend to find it that useful. Like, it's never actually worked for me. That's kind of cool. And we're getting an accidental Trinity package, so I'll snag that. Um, our flow package didn't really pan out. Um, we've kind of moved away from... The, that was kind of like an unintentional side effect just from some of our early pulls. Um, that never really, you know, manifested anywhere else, but that's okay. You know, this game is a deck builder. I'm not going to say it's not a deck builder, but I feel like people who are pl who pl if you play this coming for Slay the Spire 2, you're going to be disappointed because you just and Slay, Slay the Spire is all about getting those synergies and or getting like your nukes and figuring out how to optimize for your nukes. But like this game, it's a a lot harder to remove, a lot more expensive to remove cards and in my opinion, like, there's no opportunity cost, right? Instead of Spire, 
Every card that you don't cast is a card that could have been a, a better card to have in your hand. So you have limited mana, limited hand size. With this, if you have a card that's not useful the second, that's fine. So it's definitely a less of a strict deck builder than Slay the Spire. But I think that's to its benefit. Not to its benefit. I am glad they are different, is the best way I want to say it. Since I feel like that's the most obvious comparison. We have a ton of money, so we're going to go uh, shopping. Um, this is a great spell, but we don't really have any other poison synergies. I just want to get some upgrades. And I'm going to donate blood to get a refresh to see if we can get anything cheesy here. Oh, uh, we don't really need money. Like, this is fine. We don't really need luck at this point. Because, you know, we already were more than halfway through. Also, I mentioned that I had like three of the four hearth spells I really like. This is like the last one. It's just so much good direct damage. Uh, the flow is like icing on the cake. Literally icing, I guess, since it's Frostbolt. Um, I'll get the extra luck because we're at 43 luck right now, which is kind of neat. And for our upgrades, so we can do an upgrade one thing once and one thing t for a second time. Um, uh, if we can get anything on hit for ambient burst or minigun, it's so good. I'm gonna go with minigun. So I should just hit twice. Nah. Or just a truly stupid number of shots. Sure, let's go with a truly stupid number of shots. And um Wildfire could be good to get a double on if we can. Shots plus two or poison on hit. Go with shots plus two on this one. Um since it does hit only random sections, it just makes it a little bit more likely that it'll hit something. Um, so, with that. Boom. Alright, what do we got? Nice. Get that fire synergy yet. Oof. Yeah, I am not nearly talented enough to use that spell. Firing twice is, doesn't really make it that much more appealing to me. I'm gonna skip these. We have that. We have better stuff in our deck already. All right. So I'm not gonna say I'm worried about this boss, but I will say that this boss is pretty fucking annoying. Even like. I wish we could have fought this boss before Hazel, for instance. And possibly before Sicily. Sicily? I don't know. Oh no, that's bad. I... That is not ideal. You see, that's not, this boss is hard. Is it, if, you, if you screw up a little bit, this boss really punishes. This boss punishes mistakes very impressively. Gonna focus up a little bit. After all the shit talking, if I actually lost this one, how embarrassing would that be? Fun fact: if that blade had gotten trapped with me, I actually wouldn't take damage every single second. It only damages on move. For example, I am being damaged on move because I did not do that well. Oh. Okay, I might want to get Retile Fire if I get a chance to. Oh yeah, okay. I was getting a little nervous there. It got pretty low. So, fun fact, this next boss, um, Riva, um, so our, our artifact is that when we, if we die, we get respawned 300 health. Riva has the ability that when you die, you get, uh, respawned. If you are doing a pacifist run, you need at least one of those two powers to get the true ending. So, 
So Saffron, either the you know the boss bonus passive or your starting artifact passive will do. But if you're playing as any other character, you need to beat Reva, spare her, and not die to get the true ending. It took me a long time to realize this. Okay, this one costs, costs zero and is useless, but does actually consume and heal and give me five HP. Now, if I take it, I'll never be offered it again. So even though I don't actually want it, I'll take it because it's technically better than not having it. Now, we're getting a little low on health, and this path gives us three, um, three rescues and heal and an artifact guaranteed. So uh, that's uh, pretty sweet. So we're like, bad at being that loss in damage, but that's fine. Uh, similarly, um, let's uh, just take this thing that costs zero and gives us uh, five health. Hmm. Go with pocket sand. I like the reference. Also, I'm not sure if you all have noticed how good the pop culture references are in this game. But the pop culture references in this game are actually good. A rare gift. Another zero cost spell that gives us heal? Mm, sure. No, no real reason not to take a zero cost spell that gives you permanent life. Oh, we got so many friends now. Alright, so if I cast either of these, there's a chance that it could kill the dude. But, uh, I, I ain't got all day here. Inexplicably, I have not killed the dude yet. Like, le legitimately surprised that after all of that, that little nurse survived. Good on you, buddy. Ping is so cool, and I just don't like it. Fling is a great spell, uh, because it lets you thin your deck, but temporarily. Like, if you have spells that are good against enemies and bad against bosses, you can thin those out. I don't think really that's where we're at. And Rage is stupidly good if you have a lot of sources of fire. Oh, um, I'm gonna go with that actually. I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, Edge Lord Shizo over there is gonna give us um, uh, an item. I don't think we actually know what the item is until the end, until the start of the next round. Which is a little weird. I don't know. One thing to note in that those fights, if you have spells that give you plus max HP, you can still cast those spells and have them trigger even after the, um, what do we call it, the hostages are saved. So if you have a bunch of those in your deck, you can stand in between the two turrets and let them shoot and miss you, and then like go through some of the other spells in your deck. Wrap vertically around the field. I think this is going to kill me, but it's also pretty cool. Oh, that's just dope. I'm gonna take that, because that's cool as hell. So... This fight can also go... Oh god, I keep on looping on accident. I'm not smart enough... I'm not smart enough with the candy wrapper, it is going to kill me. And yeah, it's fights like this that maybe that are why I would go with the strategy of things that are easy to um, like focus on dodging because her spells come on fast and hit hard. Oh right, I forgot that when she does the spell, she gets reflect. You'd think I knew that after forty-four hours of playing, but um. Uh, I do not know that after 40 hours of playing.
Oh, right. I tried to see. I tried to do it intelligently there, but I didn't notice that the screen was blocked. Or the, the thing. Okay. So this is a bit dicey. I'm in more focused than usual mode. Yeah, like her shield throw could hit for like 400 damage, so that was very close. Ooh, yeah, goosebumps here. So the thing about fire, like the fire as a zone, is that both the enemies and the bosses, it's a lot of stuff where it's, like, super hard for anyone to humanly dodge, but a lot of stuff that tends to hit moderately weak. So if anything else, that's another reason I tend to do the stage last, is because my strategy is, like, have enough defense that they can survive some attrition. Oof. That does a lot of damage. But will I ever actually hit it? No. And then I'll crack a bunch of stuff and feel real silly. Okay, what do I want here? Well, I have a lot of money. Um, so I want to go on a route that has a shop. Now let's just go this way. I was unable to kill that thing before. My bad, friendo. Ooh, tw Now that is slick. Oh, I like that blizzard. Thank you, blizzard. Yeah, they go kind of a frost strategy, I guess. Go figure. This little thing's kind of annoying in that um, it heals. So, yeah. Um... We just have to have stupidly fast damage, like super big burst damage to kill it, which we do not have, so yeah. Hmm. So this is good, but it's never really worked for me. And this is just gain 150 health once per battle, so I'm going to take that one. I appreciate that Hazel gave me a nice robot to help me fight, but it is in my way and I'm going to shoot it. Oh, sure. We'll take an ice thing. We are just getting all of the ice things now. All right, what do we got going on over here? Oh, that's so good to get early, but never happens. Okay. Increased travel time by four seconds is actually really nasty at this stage in the game. Attempted, but no. Let's just get some upgrades. I don't think there's anything we super like need to remove, since the most of our crappy stuff d dissolves itself anyway. So let's just see if we can get some lucky breaks um, here. Upgrade, nice, nice, nice. 140 damage for an upgrade. Yeah, we are pretty high on health. I do think that's worth it. We have four upgrades. Um, if we can get double cast on Blizzard, it will be truly, truly disgusting. So I'm going to go real greedy here and try to get double cast. We did not get double cast, but we did gain flow. Oh, we did get spell damage when we have flow, so sure. Bit of a bummer, but I'll take it. 
And what's something that's not already upgraded that would still be good? Um, Counter Strike, if we can get double cast, is really good. Well, nah, these are all pretty disappointing. That's okay though. So I hate this particular enemy. So see that triangle thing? There's two enemies that look like that. One of them is that one. That teleports every time you attack. The other one shoots every three times you move. And I always get the two confused. This is not the game's fault. I'm just saying I don't like it. Um. Honestly, I'll take that just for the flow. Yeah, we have some pretty good flow synergies here. Laser pointer's fun. Um. We're right at the very end of the game, so the max mana doesn't really help that much, so I'll take any bit of DPS we can. So yeah, this fight is a weird one in that, like, this stuff is just so stupidly hard to dodge that, like, I just almost don't bother. I just try to kill him as fast as humanly possible while not doing anything, like, extremely stupid. Just because, like, I, I, I can't I can't be arsed to figure out what's going on in this fight. Look, just like just just keep moving and shooting and and try not to die. I do like that move though. That move's kind of cool. It took me a long time to realize that you could still move regular speed even though everything else was in slow-mo. I really wish I didn't take that candy wrapper. It is definitely hecking me up here. Ow! Ouch, bud. Alright, dodge, dodge, dodge. Nice. So, we have done a pacifist mode run. Now, often, if you don't do pacifist mode, you will see this giant gate thing and then you will have to fight it. However, since this is a pacifist mode run, we had to fight her instead. Why is it different? I don't know. So, funnily enough, I've actually gotten... I'm actually not used to fighting her because I've been doing so many non-pacifist runs to um, unlock the rest of the characters. I need to, like, re-remember the timing on this, the muscle memory. Update. I have failed the muscle memory hilariously. Like, a lot of her stuff's actually easy to dodge. It's just weird. Oh, I dodged that last one. Oh no, oh no, oh no. That was bad timing. Oh, that was bad timing. Oh, this is bad. I may actually lose this one. I may eat some humble pie on this one. Oh, this wrap is gonna kill me. I should not have taken that. I should not have taken the wrap around. I don't know why I did that. I knew I shouldn't have. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, I screwed this one up so bad. She's actually doing some of the easier attack patterns too, thankfully. Oh, come on! I should not have gotten hit by... Okay, right. I'm playing a Saffron, so I do get two, two second chances here.
I'm hilariously close to embarrassing myself on a game I've just played like 40 hours of with a stupidly good run. So I forgot that that spell anchors me. Um, so that's what happened there, is I cast a spell that makes me unable to move, and then I try to dodge. Huh, that time I used the wrapper thing intelligently. Okay, so that spell was an intense, intensely bad idea. I now know this. I have no idea how I dodged those. That was just full unconscious lizard brain dodging on that one. So now she kills me because I burned through both of my extra lives. What? I thought I burned... I totally thought I would have lost that. I thought I died twice during that fight. Whatever, I'll take it. It's a win. It is a pacifist mode win. I'm not going to kill her because, as I said, this is pacifist mode. So you get to see the victory screen. And I don't embarrass myself on my first uh, full release one step for me to play through. So we get this nice lovely little cutscene. But yeah. So all things considered, that went as well as I wanted it to. I wanted to demonstrate, hey, this is the order I like to fight the bosses, and I fought them pretty much in that order. I wanted to demonstrate, hey, get lots of shield, and then AoE and fire and stuff. And I did. And... Very cool. And now you get some cool credits that you should definitely watch, because these people are awesome. But I'm going to skip because I've watched them many times. And there's a little mini game where you get to destroy the credits. But I'm going to skip that because. I don't know, do it yourself. Right, let's see how long of a run that was. You know, what, the, what the delay was from. Oh dear god. 73 minutes? Are you kidding me? Yeah, most of my runs are like 45 minutes. Okay, so I play slower when talking. Good to know. Wow. Well, that was not stellar. Not gonna lie. But. I had fun. Um, he's, if you want me to go into more details of strategy or some more of my thoughts or whatnot, if you like this, let me, let me know. Please do check out this game. It is incredible. Next time, I'm going to kind of go through some other characters and um, point out opportunities for divergences from the builds. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. And until next time, double bite out.